Hello and welcome back. I'm Dennis Cummins, lead pastor here at experiencechurch.tv. So glad that you joined us. And I want to remind you, share this out. Uh, we're on all media platforms and what a great way to get the word out because we've got a siren call today. Uh, we have Mark Melosha from the Family Policy Institute as well as Pete Talbot from the Talbot Group. And uh, we are excited to talk about some things that are absolutely on fire. Um, Pete, welcome. Hey, thank you. We so appreciate it having you on board. I've been looking forward to this uh, very, very much. I love working with Mark and the Family Policy Institute. No better organization in the greater Puget Sound area uh, than the Family Policy Institute. Mark, you are a warrior and God bless you. Thank you, Pete. I've only joined this fight three years ago, so you guys have been fighting the fight oh, a long right. longer than me. So. And Dennis... I love being here with you as well. Thank you. Three now, warriors here. Let's do it. We're going to have a great conversation. Now, uh, you're, you're no stranger to the fight. Um, you've established uh, what we would call the relief factor. Is that correct? Well, uh, yes. My son, Seth, and I were co-founders of Relief Factor. Mm -hmm. God bless us. We had eight years wow. of, of growth. We grew over 100%. A year, uh, and in the last 18 months of our leadership of Relief Factor, it grew about 400%. Uh, yeah. But back in June, Seth and I stepped down from the day-to-day -day management of Relief Factor, and uh, we're concentrating through the Talbot Group and working with One Accord, uh, another wonderful organization that we're working with, uh, to help businesses and ministries grow, scale, achieve everything yeah. they need to be. So wonderful. There wonderful. you go. Well, let me punt the ball here because um, if, if you've just joined us, I want you to understand that, that there's something that we're holding as, as the foundation of the conversation, and it's what we're calling the high five or the high five values. Uh, it's biblical marriage between one man, one woman. Uh, we're talking about biblical gender and sexuality. We're talking about the right to life, the rule of law with responsible policing, and that we are all created equal in the eyes of God. And so with those five, uh, what we would call morals, it's interesting how some people are telling us um, you're being political or we being, we're being political when we talk about those things. So therefore, uh, many of these topics are being avoided in churches and pastors are scared to speak out. And so what, what are you guys seeing? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a couple of hours? Now? Yes. Okay. Well, d recently I've been accused of, uh, of uh, being out of line because for quite a number of years I've been frustrated with the leadership of the American church. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the church leaders have been saying now in unison all together for the most part that politics has no place in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And that's just uh, baloney, of course. That's just pure nonsense because they, in essence, drank the Kool-Aid right. that politics, you know, the, in, in reality, all of these issues that are being shoved down our throats, the whole country throat, down our children's throat, uh, they're not political. These are moral yeah. issues, moral, sp uh, spiritual, biblical issues. Yes. And followers of Jesus Christ need to make a stand. That's right. And uh, uh, Francis Schaeffer, I was fortunate enough at Bellevue Christian School back in the 60s, mm -hmm. he would come to our school for a week. And, uh, but I, uh, he, he made a comment. He said, truth requires confrontation. Indeed, he went on to say, truth demands confrontation. And, and, and so it's time for God's people to stand up, be counted, and to stand for biblical truth. Truth at all, Martin Luther. Yes. Peace whenever possible, but truth at all cost. Yes. And we're just not willing to do it. Church leadership today is not willing to make a stand. Privately, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they know the truth. They say, of course, Lord is, uh, uh, Jesus is Lord of all, but uh, they don't believe in the relevancy of Jesus in Scripture when it comes to all of life. Right. All of life. Right. So I absolutely agree with Pete. Truth is the heart of it. One of my favorite Scripture quotes is when Jesus Christ said, if you live according to my teachings, then you'll know the truth. Yes. And the truth shall set you free. Yeah. So truth 
of what scripture, what Jesus talked about is the heart of our society. And just like the issues you mentioned earlier, rule of law and equality, what's the truth about how we should live on those two issues? Mm -hmm. And as you see in Washington State, we had, we're having a very divisive, you know, what I'm say horrible debate where we're changing our, our, our criminal justice system, the police, how we deal with right and wrong and equality, which is the whole race issue. And, um, and, and if we don't go back to the truth of Jesus Christ, we're lost. And we have too many pastors and, and leaders who are afraid to speak the truth out loud. And unless we start doing this in this great moral debate, our country, our state is lost. About right. uh, three, four, and five years ago, maybe even more recently, the Barna Group did, has done several studies asking pastors. Uh, and George Barna was smart enough to ask the question this way. He says, are, are Jesus and scripture relevant to all of life, including all social, cultural, and political issues? Yeah. Interesting, 90% of pastors said yes. They had to say yes. I mean, how can you say no, right? <laughs> right. Well, they said yes. Yeah. The scary part of the survey, as Barna dug deeper into the, into the, uh, the questions, less than 10% of those 90 percenters had ever preached the relevancy of Jesus yeah. and scripture to social, cultural, and political issues, mm -hmm. and they said they never would. So in reality, we're stuck right around 8%, maybe 9% total of church leadership mm -hmm. is, willing, is willing to teach Jesus yeah. as relevant to all of this stuff. And this is why I know we, we were planning on talking about education today and lots of, lots of different things. But this is why 84% of our youth between 18 and 28 see no relevancy of the Bible to their careers. Right. They've separated life into sacred and secular categories. Jesus isn't relevant because they've been taught. He's not relevant. Yeah. And so this gets us into education and our <laughs> concerns. But we have a leadership crisis. Yes. We have a leadership crisis. Well, it's obvious. Uh, another study he did, he talked about how the majority of pastors won't touch on anything in the pulpit that they would deem controversial. Yeah. Oh, divisive. Oh, yeah. Divisive. And really, those five elements are what they deem as controversial. Yes. Um, or we're just told not. And, and, and it's amazing how the left will pin these five things as their moral fortitude and, and these are yes. value, life or death issues for them but we're told in the church this is being political we just need to shut up and put up and stay out of it yeah and just stay in our little life rafts and be quiet yeah today we have the the whole i, I think 98 percent of our theology and doctrine is based around peace yeah everything has to be peace it can't be divisive can't be confronted obey the government yeah o obey you know <laughs> romans 13 is just destroyed yeah uh logically and what have you it is a sad day it, it is. is a sad day and as bad as you know the eight percent is for pastors refusing to talk moral issues talking Jesus Christ publicly, it's even lower probably for elected leaders yeah. or oh, Republicans, sure. yeah, yeah, let alone yeah. Democrats. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so if our leaders don't want to talk truth or preach the real issues about how we're supposed to live with each other, yeah. then we're doomed as a society. So we have both groups we have to work on. That's how right. do we get pastors engaged? And how do we get our elected leaders and opinion makers involved in speaking these issues? We have great quotes from George Washington, our founding fathers, where they were uh, Abraham Lincoln, all, up until really um, just recently, folks were not afraid to talk scripture, uh, to talk Jesus. But yes. today we've, we're, we're, we put our light in the bas basket completely. Yeah. That's right. Well, I think we need to, to get back to uh, the local levels. Uh, I, we put too much emphasis on the presidential election. Oh, sure. And, and we yeah. lost our school boards. We, we, yeah. we lost the things that are dearest to us. And, you know, God's called us to protect the innocent. And, and we, we have a responsibility. And now we're seeing where we've abdicated our responsibilities, how that void darkness is filled. And uh, complete chaos has entered our school system. I mean, the, the, the pedophilia propaganda that is being pressed into the libraries and into the schools uh, is unconscionable. 
I think one of the key questions that has to be asked and answered, we have to force Christian parents to answer the question, whose responsibility is it mm -hmm. to educate our children? Yeah. Whose responsibility? Uh, John Piper uh, made a comment not that long ago that it is the parent's responsibility, not first the church, not first the government, but the parent's first line responsibility to teach children basically a biblical worldview, a Christ-centered, biblically-based, right. Christ-honoring worldview. Parents. But unfortunately, 95% of Christian parents don't believe in Christian education right. because of a number of reasons. They say it's too expensive. Uh, they want their children to be bright lights yeah. in the community, and they're willing to subject their children to secularism. This is another issue that church leadership has completely blown, yep. completely blown. In America, the default position that is accepted and completely endorsed yeah. is secularism for our kids. Secularism with a capital S, a replacement for God. Yep. And this is, this is why we've now got generations of our children that are growing up back to Barna, Depending on the study, 70 to 90% of our kids leave the church yep. when they leave the home. Yep. Big surprise yeah. when they're taught five days a week, six hours a day mm -hmm. for 13 years yep. that facts are neutral. The teacher becomes the parent. And, and the interesting thing is even the, the students that have moral values or a biblical worldview, when they get into uh, college, the four-year schools... Um, the likelihood of them coming out uh, not an agnostic or an atheist is very unlikely. You know the scary thing about the Barna studies, about kids leaving the church? Mm -hmm. He says when they do the deep dive on these kids doing the research, they make the decision to leave the church between the ages of 10 and 11. They've been submitted to this neutrality as if facts are neutral. Yeah. And... and and uh, they decide, they realize, even consciously, this is not making sense. This is not, it's a sad thing. I was uh, sitting in a conference about 30 years ago. Chuck Swindoll was speaking. Yeah. And he made the comment, I about fell off my chair because it was, it was like Francis Schaeffer was up front speaking again. And he said, the biggest lie in America is that we can separate life into sacred and secular categories. Mm -hmm. And then he said the biggest mistake parents have made is that they believe the lie that facts are neutral. Yeah. When in reality, Chuck went on to explain, facts will either lead a child to God or away from God. Mm -hmm. None of this neutral stuff. Facts are not neutral. Every fact has context. Right. As creator, we see God in all of creation, and we could go on and on and on yeah. about that. That is what a Christian education is. Unfortunately, most of our Christian schools don't have a biblical worldview. No. They, they may pray every day and have weekly chapel, but they don't teach how facts mirror and express right. who God is through Jesus. Well, we know the last days men will be lovers of themselves, so we know that things aren't going to be based on biblical values is going to be based on feelings, how they feel in the moment. That's right. Lovers of themselves. How do I, how do I make myself? And that's why, how we have that, this moral relativism. This is why I'm so excited about this guy right here. Yeah. Mark with the Family Policy Institute. Uh, folks, if you're listening, watching, uh, you need to check out the Family Policy Institute because, uh, Mark, you and your organization, we, I want to stand, I'm standing yes. with you. Uh, care about these principles and we need to give parents any individual with or without kids tools knowledge yeah. information so that they can make their stand even if it's just with their neighbors and yeah. in their communities and how that relates to politics and school boards and yeah. things we need to stand for truth and there are a number of good organizations, but I, I don't see any that are any better. You guys are just fighting the fight. Uh, thank you. We're fighting the fight, but we need help. Uh, well, I was in Moses Lake uh, last week, 
and um, and they they invited me out there because their school board is under attack. Uh, they ended up firing their superintendent, but they're fighting all this inequality, this new critical race theory stuff down there, and so the locals uh, needed help, advice. How do how do we fix this? And so the local community is starting to rally, but this is happening all across the state. We're losing the school boards to these this new radicals that right. are taking over. Uh, and so all of us need to be involved. If you think your school district is immune to all this, no, no. No. Puyallup School District, not immune. Seattle, of course, is lost. But we all have to be involved in this fight. So our goal of our organization is to get all parents, all elected leaders, aware of what's happening in the school districts, yeah. what is happening to our children, how the corruption and evil has seeped in, and to change it back to where it was. Uh, what's so exciting about this, Dennis, is that uh, change can happen. But there are some parents that are very concerned. Mm -hmm. They're crying themselves to sleep at night, yes. literally, because of what their children are being uh, subjected to. Mm -hmm. This is uh, These are serious issues when children are being told to question their sexuality oh, yeah. or even to, to choose now yes. their sexuality and everything. We don't have to go any further it, it's just vile things that our our children are being subjected to this is another reason why there are things that parents can do right now yep right now there's organizations for example renew a nation they've developed a biblical worldview curriculum and it's available online they also teach families teach teachers uh, they work with Christian schools to transfer over to a biblical worldview instead of the Christian schools just teaching facts as neutral. Right. That's not the answer. Facts will point to Jesus or away from Jesus. A right. biblical worldview curriculum is critical, and parents have to understand that. But there are options. Yeah. There's options right now. There are good homeschool uh organizations and things that you can take advantage of right now. Well, let, let, me, let me just pull this back to the leadership issue um, because the left has done such a good job of intimidating leaders, intimidating people that if you step up, if you speak on these topics, you'll get canceled, you'll get doxxed, uh, people will show up at your house. And so there's a lot of fear that I think some leaders are, are feeling or uh, trying to address, and that, that has muzzled them yeah. because they've seen other prominent people that have dared to step out um, become canceled or doxxed or blacklisted. And so how do we encourage leaders to rise? I mean, counting the cost and knowing really what they believe is true. I believe that leaders must embrace Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is our sword. His teaching is our, is, is our best weapon mm -hmm. to fight against what is happening to America. Unless we center ourselves in Jesus and his cross, you know, um, we are doomed as a society. The other side has the passion. It has the numbers. It has the money. So unless we lead with our faith, we cannot win. And so how do you convince pastors to speak publicly about Jesus Christ and his teachings? How can we have our elected leaders do that. Mm -hmm. So that's where all of us has to unify. We have to put aside our dis denominal differences, uh, but Christians need to unite against these false prophets that are among us and the savage w w wolves out there. They've mm -hmm. corrupted the media. Don't trust the media here and the mainstream media at all. And in fact, many of our institutions, our schools, higher ed, uh, uh, many different nonprofits are now working for the other side. So we have to go back to basics. We have to change hearts and minds and lead with our faith. I could not agree more. Every answer to these problems is centered in the person of Jesus Christ. Every, you can, you can ask the question, uh, does Jesus make a difference in politics, mm -hmm. in sexuality, in art, in music, drama, science, history? Mm -hmm. Does Jesus make a difference? Scripture makes it very clear that Jesus is uh, sustains all reality, all mm -hmm. creation. He not only created it, he sustains it all. Yeah. He is the mystery. He is the peace that, that keeps it all functioning and working. 
so that we can see God in a deer giving birth or in the stars or in storms or in a frog or whatever. We can see Jesus. And uh, this, even this table here, scientists wonder, they don't understand why atoms yeah. hold together. <laughs> they hold together, if you believe the Bible, right. because of the person of Jesus Christ. That's right. He is that in the center of yeah. all reality. So Jesus is our starting place. Mm -hmm. Parents need to understand that. That's why what they're being taught, facts cannot be taught out of context. They have to be taught in context yeah. as God and Jesus as creator and sustainer of all life. I like to say, you know, Genesis confusion leads to doctrine delusion. Love it. I, can it, I, can you, I use that? You can that? have it. It's free. <laughs> I got it from upstairs. Okay. Um, but that, you know, we took prayer out of the schools and then, then we, we put Darwin in. And so now, you know, here we go. Any, there is no uh, biblical science. There is no right. absolutes. You know, uh, when we were sharing in another segment, when gay marriage was voted in, I, I saw it as like the Titanic. Uh, it struck the iceberg and the, the bulkhead had been breached. Water has come over. And so the engineer goes to the captain and says, it's going to flounder. It, this will sink. And you still had people on the deck in their stoles, getting chairs ready. They're yeah. playing music. <laughs> yeah. And they, they were in denial yeah. of where they're at. And so this is where we got to come back to. We got to get back to the basics, the clarity of Christ. That's right. And unfortunately, that needs pastors and that needs elected leaders willing to be out there in the public square, take the slings, takes the rocks and the arrows in the back sometimes, but they have to preach the good news. And if we do that, you know, we will make America a, a Judeo-Christian nation again. Uh, the other side, the devil was smart convince us that secularism, we can be value neutral in our government and our laws impossible. with our constitution. Impossible. It is impossible. Now they're not even pre pretending to be value neutral anymore. Mm -hmm. They're filling government, filling the law, everything with their version of morality and values. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it is ugly. It is evil. And so we have to go back to the basics, just like our founding fathers, and make America a religious nation again, a moral nation again, and say that out loud. Amen. Dennis, you asked the question about leadership, and it's interesting. I've personally talked with probably a dozen pastors lately, and uh, many, uh, hundreds over the years. And again, when you talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, they understand. But you mentioned fear. Mm -hmm. Well, fear has gripped elder boards, yes. committees, yeah. marketing committees, uh, and they now are telling their pastors, mm -hmm. don't talk about politics because of fear. Yeah. They're afraid of the press. They're afraid of the state. They're afraid of the federal government. Uh, they're afraid of physical harm because now the end justifies the, mean, right. uh, the means for the deluded. Yeah. It's okay. Because the deluded who believe it's a good thing for a transvestite to go into my granddaughter's bathroom, right. they, they believe it. Yeah, they're sick. The cancel. I recently was uh, uh, by a friend called uh, that I was derogatory. And I was a sexist because I used the term panty waste. I, I called our our church leadership in America, panty waste. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Warren calls them that, by the way, and many others do as well, so I'm, I guess I'm not alone. But I was called a sexist and a racist and derogatory, and they, my friend said he'd no longer listen to me. Mm -hmm. And it's because of this fear that everything, we have to be at peace yeah. with brothers and sisters in the Lord at all costs, accommodation at all costs. But we're the only ones that seem to have to accommodate. Yes. <laughs> Yes, but to address this, it seems to me why I'm so impressed with the Family Policy Institute again is because they have a heart for working with pastors, mm -hmm. mentoring pastors, coming, standing alongside pastors. Uh, Carrie Abbott with the Legacy Institute is another wonderful, boy, she is just incredible, working with pastors, helping them come out of this stupor, out of this yeah. fear, to get back into true ministry of speaking the truth in love. It's always been, oh, you have to, in love, has to be in love, has to be sweet, grace, peace, joy, hope, happiness. Yeah. 
But speaking the truth can be difficult. And you have to have the courage and the boldness that only comes through the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. to speak the truth in love. You know, it's interesting. I I look at Jesus and the disciples, and if anybody stood for free speech, it was them because they died for it. They could have lived. Every one of them could have lived if they just shut their mouths, if they were silent. But they didn't. They didn't allow fear to rule them. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And that's where we have to be today. Um, we're going we're gonna to wrap this session up, but we're going to jump into another one. We are. Oh, yeah, okay. because we're going to keep this going. So, hey, guys, don't forget, share this out. Um, this is light. This is truth. And don't forget, light always wins. Thank you. God bless.